残念だよ Okay. Um, what in the. There's a lot that I have to unpack, but it's at the very end of the episode. Do you have a question about character names, perhaps? No, no. Well, I mean, why, where are you going with this? No, nothing. <laughs> okay, so obviously they're being attacked by the. How do you pronounce it? These things. The cube. Right <laughs> These things. The cube. Big old arrows above my head. These things right here. Yeah, that. I'm not yes. making arrows. I'm just going to show yep, the character. Big Vegas light sign right here. Yep. Yes. This thing. <laughs> I hate you. I just completely. Anyway, yeah, they're being These guys by, right here. By the you thought I forgot, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you thought I forgot that I said I was going to do that. <laughs> I, I just, oh my gosh! I have to start that. Anyway, the act then Eins comes in and literally gives saves them. Summons, summons some good old fashioned death knights. They just wreck everyone. They're not even a、uh, level forty five. Yeah, they're, they're 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 some of his weaker undead. They're like mid tier at best. I know,、nice、but what I was、thing. what I was mentioning is that th- that the. Threat are easily getting wiped by weak NPCs, basically. Pretty much. However, they are the first you ever actually defeat some of them. I mean,、yeah. defeat in quotation marks because it just ended with the old classic "make them." They, so, so I say defeat. They did not slay them, but they did defeat them. That's how I'm wording that. Go for I mean, too, they、honestly. fell. I mean, Eins detected that they were defeated. Yeah. Yes. They didn't know by what, though. But le- let's not get ahead of ourselves. So we meet the dwarf council, the council of dwarfs. Yep. Yep. What are you guys about? What I? Well, they're about what they described the dwarves had become. So. Nothing too surprising. They seemed a bit lazy. They didn't have any sort of direction, from what I could tell, other than、yeah. booze. <laughs> seemed to be their main goal. What's What's funny is when Eins left, they were all just freaking out. Oh yeah, we were, yeah, yeah. They were like, "Oh my god, an undead!" <laughs> I can't say the word, but you know what? You know the word. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah, it was something else. Um, and then we get to see like the the、uh, group of dwarfs with um, I forgot his name. I know he had a name. Hondo. Hondo. Gondo. Gondo. Start with the G. Yep,、uh, Gondo. Gondo. We got it this time. We we、yep. got to see、uh, this name right here. <laughs> uh, uh, where he said the name, I'm not doing that. Not for this no, one. No, no, It's no. Gondo. Yeah, yeah. He deserves his name in gold.、Oh, uh, how am I gonna <laughs> no, do? We're, we're writing it in dwarven runes. No,、Perfect. no, no. I'm not editing that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so. Anyways, yes. Well, Shaltier interrupts Eins, and I I find it. Quite、for a, the best, yeah.、Uh, yes. Eins was about to make a mistake there,、oh, and she came in and helped them. But she didn't know she helped them, but she did. Wait, what was he gonna say? Silence, I... all of you. Silence. Yeah, he was going to tell people to silence as soon as he entered a room. <laughs> he needs to work on his entrances. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, but it is interesting him being like a boss and silencing everyone once everyone's obviously freaking out. Right, and that then it was appropriate. The first time it was not, but that time it was. Yes. Yeah. I did like how he sold it to them, and all the runesmiths did realize, man, we've really fallen from grace. Well, you could see it in their eyes. They're like, from, oh man, from two hundred years since the hammer. 
it it, it, yeah. it tells that it's just been so long. But what is interesting is that the moment they saw the weapon, they were all just it's rather than booze, they were just so enticed by the weapon itself. I think they were all the, the, they say they're obsessed with the bruise and that's all they care about, but I think it's the fact that they're depressed that they can't make the weapons anymore and no one has an interest in their weapons. I think that's the real reason behind it. I mean, the fact that probably- someone like Eins is telling them, hey, I need you for something, and it, maybe that's what they needed, a little push to the right direction. I'll say that at least the Dwarven Kingdom cares about them enough to come and check on them once a year. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, yeah, because it's their people. They don't really want to sell. That's right, it's a Dwarven Kingdom. We got that right, too. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, let's make sure they're not being sold into slavery sort of thing. But that's it was more the fact that they're Dwarven people and less about the craft, for sure. Yeah, it was less on the the government. Yeah, because Gondor kind of, because Gondor was obviously sad that literally the, the council just easily had to give up the. Gave, uh, yeah, they gave in so easily. I mean, on their defense, though, they're as the general said, they're not exactly in a good position to try to fight Ains on stuff, because they're kind of screwed if they don't get help. So yeah, so I can see it on both sides. It's just yeah. You would wish if it's something precious to your people, you would want to fight it a little. Not a lot, but enough to compromise. But they gave all right. it all up. Basically. But it is it's just one Zero thing that and booze. One thing I definitely like though is just Ein showing well humanity despite being well an undead. He was despite so... what he thinks, there is some vestiges of his mem- of his humanity left. Yeah, because he wanted to jump up and down once his presentation, as he put it, was uh, successful. Uh, I, taste no. Which means that the emotion dampener thing it doesn't always do the job. It depends on the situation. Well, it depends on the intensity of the emotion. True. It's always been... Uh, it's like he can feel up to a certain level. It's always been that way. So, I don't mean to sidetrack for a second, but it, to, it, it's still relevant to this. I mean, something like when he first met Pandora's actor and how the, he constantly had to be uh, checked with his emotion because he kept getting embarrassed so badly. Pandora's actor, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, no, that was just the example, just to give off an example out of the dampener. But it, it is nice to see that uh, Ainz is, well, you know, he's actually, despite his looks, he's, like, literally kind. I mean, just when when he needs to be, that right. is. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. But after that, I think this is the part I wanted to say. Literally, there are three uh, obstacles. I, I almost find it so baffling that with Ainz there, or, well, I guess anyone in Nazarick that isn't a uh, that is a fl- okay. The floor guardians and Eins and the maids would literally are literally just gonna get through these like nothing. These uh, three mm-hmm. hardships to get through. Hang on, let's talk about the book that actually that, that all Nana right. Was talking I was about. That, that, that apparently has some knowledge, yeah. Has the knowledge of the runes, even though Eins did say that it would be considered of a robbery in the country. Yeah. So that's interesting they take, even though they won't be using it anymore. Point that. You know, he had a point saying that yes, that even you know, like crafting and all that, but it doesn't mean like it's not. It's still not part of it. I mean, it still is, but like, yes, it was forgotten. But I don't know. I I mean, I don't kind of like. I want to say it would be a robbery, like of taking the book that they didn't know. I don't know. I'm on, I'm on mixed feelings on that. Mm. Well, aside from that, there is one key detail, I guess, because this is at the end of the episode, and this is the biggest detail that we should probably talk about before wrapping up the episode. 
is the dragon. The mention of the dragon itself, and Ayn's the finally, Frost dragon. and Ayn's finally kind of starting to call back to season one. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead, Andre. That was pretty great. It goes back to my personal feelings about how I just wish that the Swords of Darkness hadn't perished the way they did. I feel like maybe if they didn't think of it this way, Ainz would have probably ended up fighting that uh, dragon earlier. Or at least have had knowledge about it. Yeah, but I mean, that, as I said, the the dragon would have been, he would have obviously been alerted. He would have taken necessary precautions against him. That doesn't change anything. He knows about the dragon country. Yeah, but I mean, what, take the, thi- it yet. the thing is no. that the girl was gonna give him the name of one of the dragons. What if it's one of the names from yes. from uh, Ix- Ixters- I can't say Yggdrasil. 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 I can't pronounce it. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, Yggdrasil. Yg- this word right here. I fucking hate you. <laughs> Yggdrasil. No. <laughs> you try to pronounce we'll it, it, Andrea. We'll put it, we'll put it in syllables. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Deal. Anyway, yeah, they they just want to kill me. Anyway, <laughs> aside from that, it is still interesting that Ainz is now getting caught up to that, knowing that he's probably gonna fight the thing by the end of this uh, arc going to be fighting the dragons and Shaltier's going to go on a blood frenzy. It's not just that. I think every floor guardian is getting a specific development. Though, if I'm being honest, the only one who's getting... A... Let's be honest. The one that needs development out of all of them is Albedo. Albedo's actually going the opposite way, but that's only because... She is. So, yeah, I, I want to get into this real quick. Straight up, Albedo's development through the series has always been single-minded towards Momonga. Specifically, Momonga. Yeah. Because that's who she cares about more than even the guild. And Ainz feels so bad about that that he actively ignores problems that she causes. Because he's and too... It's begin- you, you, you're beginning to see it. It's starting to become kind of a problem because I don't even think he's aware of the fact they're going to try to topple the kingdom of Riestes. Which, you know, that goes with the whole think of you think on your own thing, but he's not informed at all here. In a way, that is betrayal. Exactly. But not to mention, there's also the hit squad. Yes. The hit squad on the other members of Einzel Gone. Gosh. It, it is. Albedo, something's going to come to a head with that, whether it be good or bad, who knows? We it, just have to wait and see. Look, all I will say, though, is to keep an eye on, like, everything that she does from here on out whenever she appears. Because they haven't mentioned the hit squad, so. Um, they have what I am excited for personally is that they've they're actively said they're going to be releasing Negretto and Pistonia out of prison. I can't wait to see their characters again if we get to see them. Hopefully, we do. But uh, I, w- I want to see Negretto animated in all of her horror. Yeah, mm. um, but what I was going to say is the the this is to eventually wrap things up. Is what I said last uh, episode. No matter, because uh, this episode is still a ten out of ten. There's, there's no denying it, and it had I, action. Yeah, again, every episode this season has been a freaking bombshell. I love it. It, it, it it's constantly improving on itself. It improves. You did mention that last episode was the weaker one, 
so far. Out of all of them, it was the weakest, but not in a bad. <laughs> I, I think I think only because ten out of tens. It's the nine out of the ten out of tens. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I still think it's a 10 out of 10 only because, well, for this one, obviously it's a 10 out of 10 and a, a bit of action, though, to be fair, can, can we even call that a fight? That was just a massacre. Okay, but the massacre was done. The looks on their faces when they saw that guy's arm get chopped <laughs> off. Oh, death knights, man. I mean, death knights. they weren't prepared oh, for it. Oh, <laughs> But, yeah, this episode, I think, in Will's case, it was definitely an improvement from the last one. Not obviously saying the last one was bad, but obviously it's, like, bumped up the the pacing. There was, like, a tiny dip and it went back up. Like, yeah. It's, so, it's not I mean, a loss. But, it, I mean, it's setting up for the biggest thing ever. And then the, that's, we haven't even, re- we just reached the halfway point, too. And it looks like next episode we might even get the fight with the dragon, or at least the encounter, and then the fight. But yeah. we haven't even reached the whole situation with Princess Renair or the stuff with oh, or with the don't stuff you with worry. the That's still coming. Yeah, that's still uh, Are we even halfway through the season? I feel like we we're just, just reached, reaching the halfway point. We just yeah, reached the halfway thought. point. Yeah. It doesn't even feel like there's, it. There are yeah, yeah. seven episodes there's left. Still- God, there's so okay. much. I thought to think I thought this was going to be a two C or a twenty four season. <laughs> nah, nah, season. nah. They they're oh, doing they're doing such no. a good job in keeping yeah. us entertained while cramming so much. But it feels yeah, they've really stepped up the storytelling this season. I love it. So for sure, this is a ten out of ten, and I mean, what else can we say? This episode was just honestly amazing lore increase action pretty interesting and a bunch of world building so what what can you say it was a really good episode say this name up on the, up on the i arrow. am so mad <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>